Horizon Rebuilt Chapter 8 Horizon held her hands under a faucet streaming frigid water over the bizarre object that had both caused her immense trouble and saved her life multiple times. She stopped the stream for a moment to examine it again. It was a perfectly smooth metallic sphere with no ports, no indicator lights, nothing to indicate what was inside. Even the warning, tell no one, that had been written on it when she first found it in her pocket had washed away. She held it between thumb and forefinger up to her eye line and gazed over it again. Are you sure about this? Samantha appeared in the mirror next to the raccoon's reflection. She nodded at the ear she held. Based on all the data I've gathered, I'd say there's at least an 86% chance. That is a custom-built containment unit for a gravitational micro-singularity. The raccoon tried to recall the last time she'd seen a container for a microscopic black hole. That time, it had been a small disk. She had felt a weight to it then. A literal gravity pulling her towards the device. Horizon imagined she could feel that now, a pit in her stomach and a burn in her throat. She tried to find a seam where the sphere could have been placed around such a disc, but found nothing. How did it do those things at the factory? she asked. The sphere contains a small amount of computronium and electromagnetic field manipulation equipment in addition to the Singularity and its confinement field generator, Sam explained. I was able to gain limited access using your pilot credentials, and this guy, she pointed over her shoulder at her feigned tail, was able to focus the gravitational pull in various directions for your protection. Horizon stared at her AI avatar's tail suspiciously. What is that, anyways? I thought I made you to be an avatar for my implant's AI. Well, Sam looked oddly guilty for some reason. You see, there's not exactly an AI in your implants. What? Horizon thought, confused. Wait, do you mean there's multiple AIs in me? The projected panda fidgeted with her hands as she composed the response. That's a bit of a simplistic way to put it, but sort of. Are you familiar with the Society of Mind? Horizon shook her head, even though she knew she was communicating with an entity only visible to herself. I'm not particularly well-versed in psychology. Okay, have you heard that conscious beings are composed of thousands of little minds called agents? I might have. That sounds vaguely familiar. All right, Sam stroked her tail as if showing anxiety. Well, conscious beings have all these agents doing their things, and when they all happen to go in the same direction, it looks like decision-making. The concept of a self is really just an illusion produced by the uncoordinated simultaneous actions of those agents. Horizon's eyebrow twitched at that comment. I'm pretty sure that I exist. Well, technically speaking, I don't. Sam gave an exasperated shrug. However biological sofans work, artificial intelligence is our guest thoughts of hundreds of thousands of different algorithms that occasionally work towards a common goal. This simulated personality you're interfacing with represents the output of just a handful of those algorithms. So you're what, a spokesman? That's a fair approximation of my function, yes. Sam reached a hand towards the mouth at the end of her tail, but it dodged with surprising speed. However, there are some algorithms in your system that I am denied access to. They're what this guy represents in the visual metaphors of your mind. Horizon stared intently at the mouth on the avatar's tail, trying to focus her thoughts onto it. What algorithms do you represent? The tail's maw opened wide and spoke two simple words that brooked no argument. Insufficient clearance. Okay, then, Horizon conceded. She turned her attention back to the orb in her hand. 
Is there anything else in here? Sam disappeared from Horizon's left side and reappeared next to her right arm, staring intently at the orb. I couldn't get much access, but there's a lot of data stored in there. And I mean a lot of data. Possibly more than our whole brain contains. But without a processor that can make use of it. And you don't know what it could be, Horizon guessed? Nope. Sam admitted. Clyde, she gestured towards her tail, doesn't seem to have any access to it either. I agree with you that Luke Dedalf probably made it, but aside from the software to control the singularity, I couldn't tell you what else was inside it. Is there any way to find out? Horizon turned the orb over again, taking yet another look for any sort of interface port. We tried magnetic induction, Sam explained. I was able to take a look at the data, but it was heavily encrypted with two different codes. Clyde managed to decrypt the Federation code, but he didn't share any of it with me, of course. What about the other code? Sam sighed. It's a few orders of magnitude simpler than the Federation code. However, that just means that if I applied all the processing power of your implants to it, I'd be able to decode it in one yard year. A year? Horizon gasped in shock. Give or take a few months, the panda added, and that's if I divert power from keeping us alive, despite your reckless lifestyle. Horizon sighed. She made a motion to set the orb down. Then inspiration struck. Could we use an external computer to decode it? Oh, yeah, sure. Sam nodded rapidly. Though I wouldn't expect any consumer-grade computer from your primitive system to crack it in less than a century. I'd suggest getting hold of one of the company's supercomputers or something. Horizon looked at the orb again and considered. A supercomputer, you say? Jennifer was busy in her lab when Horizon found the white swirl. The space contained multiple tables and desks covered with assorted biological engineering equipment. Tables snaked from a single central computer tower on the center desk into multiple printers and analyzers. Half of them whirring and clicking at any given time. She looked up from a petri dish covered with painted shell as the raccoon entered. Oh, hi. Don't normally see you down here. Ryzen nodded at her girlfriend. I had a bit of a situation, and I was hoping you'd be able to help me. Jenny dropped a few drops of solution from a pipette onto the dish as she responded. Is something wrong with your implants? You want to go back into the virtual rage or something? Horizon shook her head. More dry tech than wetware, I'm afraid. She pulled the orb out of her pocket and showed it to the swirl. Do you know anyone who could decrypt whatever's stored on this? Jenny set her tools onto a rack and stared intently at the mysterious sphere. Before she could say anything, Sam whispered in Horizon's ear, are you sure you want to trust her with this? I won't tell her it's a black hole unless absolutely necessary. The raccoon retorted silently. And remember that if Macrat gave it to us, that means that tell no one instruction was not in order. Is that fed tech? Jenny's question brought Horizon's attention back to the present. Horizon gave a small shrug. I picked it up back on the resolution. So it probably is, but I'm mostly interested in the data that's on it. Sam said she didn't have the processing power to decode it in any reasonable amount of time. So she recommended I find some kind of supercomputer to take care of it. Well, Jenny considered with a glance over her shoulder towards the processor tower on her desk. I wouldn't call it a supercomputer per se, but I do have a decently powered machine here. That's nice. Sam popped into existence standing behind that tower. Based on what I can see here, this thing took crack the encryption in just over half a century. Fifty years? Jenny gasped in shock. What, is this thing quantum encrypted or something? No. 
Sam retorted. If it was quantum encrypted, your machine here would have no chance. As is, the coder probably used the resolution's quantum computers to develop the encryption. But I can't pick up any uncertainty principles at work here, fortunately. Jenny scratched her chin as she thought, so if we had a quantum computer... Sam looked up at the swirl with interest. Are there any quantum computers on this moon? It's not really something they advertise, but the company uses them to run the credit network. Jenny pulled a paid chip out of her pocket and held it up, showing the AI panda through Horizon's eyes the small LCD screen displaying the amount of Surter company strip stored on the chip under the company logo. About seven years ago, some guys managed to steal a few quantum cores from the treasury. They were planning to use the codes on them to rob the company blind, but instead the company just put out a new script and forced us to trade in our old sats for new ones. At a terrible exchange rate, I might add. Sam looked very interested now. So what did they end up doing with the stolen cores? Jenny shrugged. Sometimes somebody suggests they have one of them. Occasionally, there's a rumor that one was used in a major cybercrime. But nobody can say for sure. Would you, by any chance, know where to find one of those people? Sam blinked out of existence and rematerialized right in the small space. I can't imagine that those bioplots of yours came from our places. Jenny staggered back bumping into the desk behind her. I might know a few people in the black market, she claimed, but I'm not really a computer's person. I'm more into wetware. Sam leaned over Jim's protruding stomach to stick her nose right up into Jim's. Still, did you chat? Great, please. Sam, give her some space. At Horizon's demand, the AI turned to glare at the raccoon for a moment. Then she blinked out and reappeared, sitting in a cross-like position on desks at the far side of the room. I'm going to need that table in about half an hour, Jenny complained, pointing at a tray of plates under the illusion's legs, one tube sticking out of her immaterial thigh. I might know someone who might have a lead, but I can't guarantee that anything they so you would be Jenny. She picked up her pipe again and started tripping on plates again, and her eye twitched. Hold on, she said. That Sean guy you rescued yesterday mentioned he was a computer scout. Hmm? Horizon inquired. Sam waved a hand at a document appeared in the mirror next to it. Showing the image of the whole Horizon had saved next to a list of qualifications and work history. Horizon focused on the document and it zoomed through the air and came to a stop in front of her face. An IT journey Brad? It says he just barely passed the exams. But the notes from his mentor suggest discipline issues. Sam explained, he might actually be helpful. So, Ryzen considered, you're suggesting we obtain a stolen quantum computer from some shady guy in mean, the Surtur underworld? And bring a kid who might have the company out looking for his head after framing him for arson. Pretty much, Sam commented with a smirk. 